guys, let's bring in a friend of yours, I believe. Good friend of Steve mine. Steve Grasso, a trader for Stuart Frankel, and he's got some stock picks and a few other things to talk about with this market. How, How are you doing, you? Steve? Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Steve. Good Thank to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank Thanks you. for joining us today. Steve, first nice of all, here. make sure I got your name and position and all that Perfect. stuff right. Perfect. Steve right. Grasso, Managing Director, Institutional Sales. Yeah, I didn't say Managing Director of Institutional <laughs> yeah, that's Sales. That's a much more formal I, I, uh, title there. That's right. So what do you do, actually? I, what is what is a if you have your money in an investment fund, fund if you, it's whether it's a um, pension fund or whatnot, they come to me and I buy and sell their positions on the floor of the stock exchange. Okay. So and so you're out there seeing the trading flow day right. to day, right? right? From the institutions themselves and what the big money is moving back and forth. Right. And obviously, I'm trying to keep their positions as anonymous as possible. Right. So is anything so, you want to tell that you got an order exactly. came through from SAC <laughs> that's, that's today? Right, that's you right. want to tell her, Stevie right. Cohen's buying. That's right. That's right. No, I definitely don't want to say that. <laughs> right. Definitely don't want to well, say hey, that. I, I mentioned earlier, I saw a little bit of fear out there in the markets today. I mean, especially with the commodities skyrocketing and the markets tanking. I saw some guys sort of freaking out a little bit. Did you sense any of that down there? I, I don't. I think it's too early. Obviously, first day back, so I don't think there's any real, you know, um, conviction in what people are doing yet, and I don't think there's any real fear yet. But let's remember, it's not like uh, where the common person who wants to lose 10 pounds has a New Year's resolution. We can't come back and hope, hey, like, well, let's hope subprime's over. Let's hope the credit woes are gone. So things are still here that were here two days ago, two weeks ago, two months ago, since middle of August. It's not going away. It's not, you, know, you guys know better than anybody, these things cannot be swept underneath the carpet. But how long, I mean, when does it start to get priced in? Oh, I mean, that's what everybody's definitely. been trying to gain for months see, on see, end, I, and we're not seeing it. I did call for a trading bottom in the financials last week. I think we got a 10 to 20 percent move over the next right. month. Are you buying that at all? Right. Well, I, I don't know if anyone could ever call a bottom. Right. First of all, no, people are horrible at calling, calling bottoms. But I think there's a true test to when John Thane walks into Merrill and you have a new gentleman running a uh, city, I think what they want to do is get all that dirty air out immediately before it gets attached to their names. True enough, right? I mean, so, they don't. They, they, they can blame it on the predecessors. Exactly. So if, you, if you're sitting on that for a quarter, two quarters, then it starts to you own the smell. So if, the, <laughs> if these people, if these people are starting to, you know, really look at it and say, "Oh my God, it, it might be a little bit of Thane's, you know, mess up." I think he's got a vested interest in handling it as soon as possible, getting the write downs out as quick as possible. That's why you saw a city with the you know, twelve billion dollar write down. If I were quick enough, I'd quote Leonard Skinner that smell, but I'm not going to be able to pull it off. <laughs> Ooh. Good. Thank you. Well done. That's close enough for the quote. That's today. right. All right, but so, but what do you like going forward? I mean, you and I started talking earlier about moving into nuclear, solar, away from ethanol. Right. Right. Well, I, I think let me just finish up with, with Cody on the on the banking side of it. I think you have to edge into your position or just leg into it, whether it's a 10 percent or 15 percent of whatever you want to allocate, because none of us can call bottoms. I think you have to start just getting into it slowly. And technically, well, I, I just want to I just want to be perfectly clear. What I was suggesting last week, and I still I still think it's a good trade, is buying right. some slightly out of the money four or eight weeks Absolutely. out calls in some of this stuff. No, you're going to lose the entire principal if it doesn't work out. But I think you, I do right. think you can get a double or triple on some of this. Absolutely, I agree Are with the you. institutions starting to buy Buy back into these financials? I, I think, uh, unfortunately, they were buying to cover just to close out the positions last year. Yeah, so they, yeah. they're not really, they want to see something first. So they want to see if it passes the test first. And I think they're going to wait. And this, you know, the January effect, as you alluded to before, I think they're going to wait. You said the test. What's that test they got? Well, I, I think they really have to see some type of foundation that they're building here. And I think when you see stocks in the banking industry have, uh, you know, people overseas investing money in our companies who see a worth in it, as you said before, you might be able to pick a spot here. I think the American investor starts to say, what does Abu Dhabi see, you know, that we don't see? As long as they companies. don't back out of the deals. Well, there you go. There you go. Right? Because there's termination Everything's fees. falling apart there, Things all are these falling deals. apart. And these guys now are building these termination fees. He's in. Right giving themselves an out. Right, they're setting a new, a new foundation, a new platform. That being said, the, the deals that are falling apart are, are debt-driven deals, right. and these Abu Dhabi guys have... Right, what, different. Did I see something today? One of those one of those, um, those, those sovereignties over there, $800 billion in their fund they've got now? But that's it's a incredible. valid point, is that you chair. can still have deals with cash. But Absolutely. people forget that. That's it's right. not all Well, that. that's... Warren Buffett right. did cash right. deal last right, week. Right. You've got Icon still using cash Yeah, the old there. guys know. It, cash Kikori is king. Uses yeah. Some cash occasionally. That's right. These guys were smart enough to be on the right side of trades. Right. They still have the money. They still have the money on their balance sheets, and they look good. Steve, so, before we let you go, give us sure. two stock picks. 
I think you got to go. We're, we led into the alternative energy. I think you got to look at maybe a uranium play again. I think that's going to come back on at CCJ. Uh, that's and a I, stock think, I think you got to look at Entergy and Exelon, all, things like that. All three up, what, two, three hundred percent in the last three years. Yeah. I always call people out that this is a cyclical industry. Yeah. We're in the year five of a cyclical boom. And at what point are you yeah. staying at the poker table yeah, too I, long? I, I, I'm crazy that way. I want to buy winners. So, <laughs> you know, I've seen, and, and what, what I said before is I think we're going to see a replay of 07. We're going to start to see a subprime come back in. So why not have the winners from 07 just continue their but lay not higher? solar. Uh, I think solar is okay as well, but I think that uh, people are still talking about that. I think once uranium starts to hit again, I think you're going to gain some traction on a lot of these plays. And plus, the CCJ has the gold in it as well, so you get the gold benefit and the uranium. It's a nice hedge against uh, inflation. I got to tell you, man, it's just uh, too far in this part of the cycle. I wouldn't touch them, and I tell people at home, stay away from the commodities, stay away from the energies at this part of the cycle. Wait till, wait, wait. Buy, buy when they're expensive, sell when they're cheap. They're all trading at six times earnings in these right. days. But it is, I mean, we, ha we need an alternative. So it's not like this it's, stuff's going away. It, well, what, hap what, what I picture happening is that in year five of a boom, we've had a trillion dollars of spending into energy capacity, new alternative energies. Over the last five years, there's been a trillion dollars that has gone into this industry, and at some point, that capacity comes online. I'm looking at 2008, 2009, when that stuff comes online, Absolutely. and then you have supply, Prob overwhelmed demand. The problem is, with ethanol, it's not a real viable source or alternative. Yeah. So people are going to lose their uh, their love with uh, ethanol very Haven't soon. they already? I mean, yeah, that's I well, ethanol's I think it's, been trashed I, I, already. I We've think seen it's trash, but the, I think the, now the they got to that the government so and the Republicans yeah. and Democrats put over on us. But, uh, but, now, but, now, but now now they, the federal government has to start backing a different horse. So what's the well, horse? Can't they back? just get out of the horse races all could, together I, and let I the agree. free markets figure out you. this energy problem? I, I mean, it's I happening anyway. It's happening anyway. We've LEDs replacing everything else. What can I tell you, Steve? <laughs> Great Pleasure. to see you, man. Thanks Pleasure. a lot. Thanks. Thank see you, you soon. so much. Thank you. Untapped guys with the presidential election closing in fast. Both sides are weighing in on the future.